we are going to invite you into pausing for an opening ritual for this week's gathering. We've already begun and you know that and some of you have been with us uh, throughout this already amazing day. We had some beautiful, two beautiful, three beautiful sessions and a wonderful plenary and we're off and running but we're going to pause to kind of acknowledge what brings us here and set our hearts and minds um, to the task before us. After that, we're gonna have a little bit of time to just kind of be together and share what our hopes are and what our longings are as we come together as religious education, re religious educators and those who care about innovating this thing that we do um, through the lens of climate justice. So let's move into a time of just uh, opening the space together and I'll invite Wanda into that. So before we begin with the spoken part, I just invite everyone um, to take a deep breath in and out and to do that a few times. To close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. And to envision yourself in whatever way feels comfortable but you're comfortable for your body at this point to ground yourself in dear earth as we continue to seek our wisdom as we <clears throat> finish this day and move through the week to come. So as we gather this day, I invite us into a time of honoring and celebrating the fullness of the community that shapes each of our spaces. <clears throat> we are grateful for the indigenous people, the original habitant, inhabitant, human inhabitants of each of our lands who lovingly and respectfully lived in kinship with our bioregions for generations. May we honor their ongoing legacy for working for their continued flourishing as a people and following their example of caring for the earth as our neighbor and our kin. We celebrate the more recent wise and loving human ancestors who nurtured the best of each of our faith communities and our lives. We are grateful for the legacy they entrust to us. And we celebrate those ancient, ancient ones, the ones who go back before memory, before recorded history even, who have gifted us in our DNA with inherent wisdom of how to live in kinship with our natural surroundings and with each other. So take a moment now to look out a window if one is nearby or gaze upon a plant or a pet if one happens to be in your lap or a rock or even a glass of water, some representation of the more than human world. We are grateful for these more than human kin who are present here with us in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our nearby outdoor spaces. May we take a moment to give thanks to those members of the more than human community who are gathered with us each here this day, either in our space or outside our window. We are grateful for all the ways in which these beings contribute to our health and the well being of our ecosystems. We offer thanks for the gifts of the particular season that we are experiencing in each of our parts of the globe. As we come together from all hemispheres, we also hold in our awareness the particular climate urgencies in our own bioregions and watersheds. So take a moment now in silence 
to reflect on the urgencies you are feeling in your body, in your neighborhood, in your community, in your watershed, and in those places of the earth that you call dear. We offer thanks for the gift of gathering on this day and over the course of this coming week to focus our spirits, minds, and bodies on care for dear earth. May we set an intention for entering these spaces with honesty, with care for the dignity of each person, acknowledging all of our gifts and limitations, our beauty and our scars, our wisdom and our quirks all of which we seek to offer in love and service. Amen. So over the course of this week, we will be inviting you to participate in times like the one we just shared, some moments of grounding and centering. As we huddle around our screens, let us remember that we are living, breathing, embodied beings whose ancestors gathered around wells for the day's water, around fires for shared meals and storytelling, under stars for relaxation and dreaming. We, like our ancestors, are created to be in actual physical contact with each other, the earth, and the sky. And so we invite you as um, when, when this call is over and you leave your screen tonight to gather up remnants of dear earth and bring them back to the space where you come to do your Zoom calls. Maybe it's water from your watershed. Maybe it's a stone from a hike you went on. Maybe it's dirt from your garden or maybe you have dirt from your home place. Maybe it's a picture of a special place in nature and keep those close at hand as we gather this week. So while we are using technology and these plastic screens and these minerals that come from deep in the earth to allow for the miracle of being together without having to travel, let us keep close at hand those actual tangible reminders of what we're working on behalf of. I hope that you'll also get outside as often as you're able this week. If, if possible, when you're outside, take off your shoes and feel the ground beneath your feet. Take deep inhales and deep exhales. Remember to treat your body as part of the dear earth that it is. And I will be doing that whenever I have a 10 or 15 minute break. I'll be getting outside and I'll be reconnecting with the earth, which gives me the energy to do the work that I do in the world. I come to this week so grateful to the REA for the way it has nurtured and held my unfolding vocation for over 30 years. I'm especially grateful for several themes from past meetings that directly shaped my work and my calling. In recent years, Patrick Reyes theme on being good ancestors and Dean Blevins work on neuroscience, Bo Young Lee's work around gender, Karen Marie's insistence that all children are our children all of these programs helped me direct my scholarship and deepened my perspectives as a religious educator. They have changed me. And so thank you, Jack, Jack Seymour, for introducing me to this wonderful group of people um, because it has deepened and, shaped it, and deepened and shaped my work and my life. Um, a lot of my energies for this particular meeting have gone to inviting people who I think belong here <laughs> to have a seat at the table and to explore this organization because I know that the work they're doing qualifies as religious education, even though they may not have gotten in the habit of naming it as such. So I ask you look, to look out for newcomers. Um, most of those people I've invited are young. Um, look out for young people who you may not have seen in this space before and find a way to affirm them, um, engage them in conversation or reach out to them. When the idea surfaced in the quiet center of myself that REA might center its attention around the crisis of our planet, it felt like a golden thread weaving together the many years that I've been a part of REA. We become good ancestors as we care for all of our relations, as we act with 
our multiple intelligences and kinship with the multiple and diverse experiences of being human and in light of the next seven generations of humans and more than humans who will come after us. Hosting these plenaries and breakout sessions is a love letter to dear earth, born of my deep fear and grief for all that we are losing and also from my deep love and hope that the faith traditions I respect and honor yet hold wisdom that will heal and repair us in the midst of what Daniel Ford today called tough moments with a prognosis to deepen. We leaders, teachers, and stewards of diverse faith traditions and the nuances within them, we hold something the world needs right now. The wisdom from these deep wells, the deep and flowing underground current that is spirit, creation, universe will be necessary if we are to expect a great turning even if we are to expect solace in the midst of a great turning that doesn't happen, survival in the midst of a great turning, or a, a lot of small turnings made up of multiple small but not insignificant dances, actions, movements, and resistances. So it is from that place of hope that I welcome you to this week's dialogue, engagement, celebration, and lament. So listen to these words from the poet, <clears throat> excuse me, Antonio Machado. Wanderer, your footsteps are the road and nothing more. Wanderer, there is no road. The road is made by walking. By walking, one makes the road and upon glancing behind, sees the path that will never be trod again. Embodying this wisdom, Dory and I began regular walk and talks back in the spring of 2021. Dory from a forest in Virginia and me by a riverbank or along an ocean beach in Maine. Like the wanderer in the quote, we had no idea where our conversations might lead. We were both discerning mid pandemic, late career vocational transitions. Along this emerging path, we discerned two common questions that were guiding us. How do we bring the best of ourselves to the work of climate justice? And what does it mean for us to be good ancestors as we move into the third third of our lives? As we journey together, the idea for this year's REA annual meeting began to sprout. Like Dory, I've been blessed by the mentoring and guidance of this organization for three decades now. Offering this theme at this particular moment in REA's life and in our planetary journey felt like a way to pay it forward, both to this organization and to dear earth. You'll hear folks say throughout this week that, it, that it's at its root, the planetary crisis is a spiritual crisis. Our faith communities, however construed, have an important and unique role to play in addressing this crisis. Our spiritual traditions hold wisdom to help us imagine a different future, nurture love for the more than human world, and engage in practices to build the resilience needed for what to face whatever it is that's before us. Faith communities have a key role to play in equipping people to face our uncertain and challenging future with compassion, resilience, and hope. They also have a formative role to play in addressing tendencies towards greed, consumerism, and apathy, especially amongst those of us raised in Western cultures, those aspects of the, those cultures that are fueling the current crisis. The two of us have experienced what might be termed formative education happening in spaces outside of faith communities and religious academic settings. During this week, we'll offer conversation partners from a variety of contexts. We hope that this cross-pollinization will seed relationships of people, ideas, theories, and practices that can inform religious education and formation practices in more dedicated religious spaces. So we invite you to journey with us as we create the road ahead by walking together through this gathering, seeing what emerges on the path as we go. So we're gonna move into breakout rooms in just a minute. Before we do, I just wanna tell you about one little portion of the gathering that doesn't show up on the schedule. It's called Walk and Talks. 
and we're encouraging you to make a new friend. Hopefully someone from a different place than where you are. Hopefully someone um, who might have a different experience of what's going on uh, around climate urgencies and climate um, disasters or climate hope or climate healing in their part of the world. So the way we're gonna do that is through getting you on Padlet and um, Lakeisha, will you please put that link in the chat? And when you go to Padlet, there's an area for you to, to uh, put your name and your email and gra or grab someone else's name and email and just say, I've chosen Josh. Josh has already signed up. I've chosen Josh to be my walk and talk partner. And then get together over email and find a time when you can get off the screen and go for a walk together because that's how this whole thing started. <laughs> Wanda and I think maybe other things will get started if other people uh, take walks together um, and use the miracle of our cell phones to engage while we're out in nature. So that's um, a little cookie we've put in there for you that we think will be good for all of us and for the earth. Here are the questions we would like you to consider in the breakout room. Introduce yourself, who are you? Where do you live? What brings you to this dear earth gathering? And what is one hope you have for this meeting? Everyone, welcome back. Um, I would love it if you would put into the chat a hope that you bring to this week, or maybe a hope that you've adopted from a friend after hearing their hope. I believe um, these hopes can be relational and that we can borrow them from each other. <laughs> when we hear a better one than we had, maybe we want to adopt a new one. We'd love for those to populate the chat as we um, wrap up here. We see Cassidy having a hope to simply re-engage in a larger community of educators. And uh, Sierra Marie says, yeah, same. Hopeful that the language of kinship will emerging in so many ways. Yes, thank you, Mary. My hope is to discover here a new hope for creation. Hope to find and deepen my hope for the earth and community with REA. Hope for a more expansive framing of the challenge of creation care. Thank you, Vaughn. And that REA continues to bring us together as colleagues. Christine is hoping for more reflection on and commitment to trans species, empathy and care. Hope for connection with all the creation and ancestors. And I hope Lynn and I meet in person soon since we live in the same town. There's so much grief present among those of us who uh, remember REA meeting in person. And in the midst of that grief, we are also celebrating getting to see one another's faces on the screen and, you know, remembering and being very grateful, cherishing the times when we uh, shared meals together and gone for a glass of wine or a cup of tea at the end of a meeting. Um, we hope that... Um, we are able to gather as REA again in person in the future. All right, anybody want to speak anything? Anyone want, Does anyone have anything that they heard or that's in them in terms of hope for this meeting that the room needs to hear them say out loud in their voice? Sometimes that happens. Sometimes we get stirred and I want to make space for that. I'm not seeing anyone's hands. I do have one more to read out, which is um, Sierra Marie saying she's grateful to be able to participate in a way I can't when the meetings are in person. Thank you. And I'm grateful that we can have global participation, which isn't always possible when the meetings are in person. Thank you for um, being here this evening and for um, participating with us in such a rich day one. <laughs> 